Well, happy Memorial Day to everybody. Clay Patton with you on the Rural Radio Network as we take a little deeper dive in the markets. Again, no markets actually trading today, but what a better time to actually kind of take a stop and look at what's happening. Joining the conversation, livestock market analyst Kyle Bumstead. And Kyle, this cattle market still pretty aggressive. We saw some good trade last week develop uh, with some solid dress trade still here in the north. Looks like the box beef is holding for us. Uh, Can we expect this to stay with us or now that we're into grilling season, we're kind of through now getting this June time frame. Are we going to see that seasonal pull us back lower? That's a very good question, Clay. First of all, thanks for having me back and, uh, you know, uh, happy Memorial Day to everybody out there. But yeah, it, it looks like uh, we are on the precipice here uh, of either rocketing this market extremely higher, both fats and potentially feeders here, or uh, we're going to go down and make uh, potentially that cash low here for the summer. So uh, I think what we really need to kind of keep watching here is this box beef market, as well as our spreads. And you know, I'm a very big proponent of the spreads here, Uh, you know, kind of towards the end of the week here, when we got into Friday, we saw that June losing ground to the August and the August losing ground to the October. So that kind of tells me that uh, maybe the, the trade is, you know, anticipating a drop coming in the cash market here. Uh, and that's why those spreads got sold. So recently last week, we did see the box beef market kind of firm up towards the end of the week. Now, some of that could have been uh, on that Memorial Day buying here, you know, kind of a little bit of, uh, you know, you know, a little bit of quick cleanup type buying uh, going on out there. Also, uh, you know, we could see a little bit of uh, cooler fill here right after Memorial Day. So we could see this box beef market, you know, kind of hang in there for a little bit. And then uh, we'll be looking, you know, potentially as we get into the dog days of summer here, as we always do for a box beef market here to kind of maybe uh, slip, slip and slide uh, off just a little bit here, Clay. It's definitely one we're going to keep a close eye on. Now, on Friday, we got out more inflationary data, and you and I have talked about before, Tahoe payments and T-bones. American expenditures are going up. Income is shrinking a little bit. So is your thought, is is there still anything to be concerned about there, or has the consumer kind of gotten in with inflation and they're just, they're content for now? I think they're content for now, but it's always an underlying issue that I see. Um, You know, when you go to the grocery store, you see a lot of people buying stuff on credit cards, and that bothers me a little bit because we're going to see the Fed come out here last week and started talking about uh, raising interest rates again, maybe another half half a point here uh, yet this year. So that could have a big, uh, big effect here on, uh, you know, household expenditures. So that's something that I'm definitely watching here and trying to keep uh, track of as we move forward here. And we also need to watch these equity markets and outside markets in this banking industry as well, because those are some big things uh, as we saw in the grain complex earlier, you know, when some of these hedge funds were asked to liquidate their position so they could generate capital, they did. And it really drove those markets down. And uh, we haven't seen that happen in the cattle complex. Like we saw the uh, severity over in some of these other markets like hogs or the grain complex, uh, as we saw here last month. Clay. And I know you're a guy that watches the spreads closely. You've talked about that as well. But on that hog spread, I mean, we just continue to crush these hogs, uh, obviously still facing some liquidation issues. But are we starting to get to a point where these hogs can maybe catch a leg to stand on? It is possible. And as we finished up last week there on Friday, we did see there was a little bit of commercial buying in there. That June gained on the July and July gained on the August here by some decent amounts here. So I do think there is a possibility that the commercials are kind of stepping in down here. But what I keep hearing uh, as far as the, the complex as a whole, we're starting to liquidate or we're liquidating more sows. And uh, so that's just throwing that that much more meat out there on the market. I think we're, you know, six months down the road could be a different story here with this hog complex here once we get some of these sows cleaned up. Now, uh, a lot of this is going to be you know, how, how do people react to Prop 12 and what's the next shoe to drop on that one, as we saw already out in California setting the precedent. So we do definitely need to keep our eyes uh, on the government as well and what their rulings uh, start to move forward on some of this other livestock uh, in the industry. That has been some big rulings there, Prompt 12, and then on the WOTUS side of it as well. You can check out all those stories and more to find out what's happening, ruralradionetwork.com. Uh, Kyle, when we look at, well, uh, other reports that came out, bo- uh, not box beef, cold storage, USDA cold storage, tightest supplies we've seen of commercial cold stocks of beef in 19 months. Are the We know the Packers are, have lost margin on these cattle here in recent weeks. Uh, are they pulling out of those supplies, and are they trying to slow that chain a little bit? I think that is some of it. They are trying to slow that chain just a little bit to try to help increase their margin. But uh, again, if this consumer demand stays up there and the box beef market does stay hot, they have no reason really to slow this down to get that product back out there onto those plates. Because if that's what the people are wanting, that's what they should get. Uh, but uh, we have seen that, yes. As we, we also saw that the marketings were lower here uh, during the month of uh, uh, April, uh, as of the 1st of May here in this last cattle on feed report. So it definitely does uh, say to me that they slowed this chain down a little bit, trying to increase their margin, Clay. 
Definitely things to keep an eye on. On the uh, feeder cattle side as well, finally getting some good rains across parts of Nebraska and Kansas, some of those drought-impacted areas. For your area there around Erickson, Kyle, how are things looking? What is the general thought of of cattlemen there? Well, we're still kind of in herd liquidation mode here. We do have grass, but uh, we need some more rain up in this area. Things greened up. We've got some grass, but I don't know as we're at that uh, point where we want to start building the herd again just yet. Uh, we need to see more rains keep coming through this weather pattern to change and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, get us back into a different weather uh, weather pattern here. We start getting more rain and, and uh, you know, get some more confidence built up here. And uh, then we could probably look at uh, building the herd again. But for now, we're still in liquidation. We saw a big liquidation here in the southern plains here the last couple of months. These cattle coming off the graze out. And I think that's going to slow down here as we sh- we normally do get a slowdown here in the summertime as far as placements go. So I think that's one, something we need to watch, too, um, if we do start to retain some heifers, which we won't know that until we uh, get back into that July uh, all cattle report here, that semi-annual cattle report that comes out here, uh, we'll have a little bit better idea. It's a government report, not saying we put a lot of weight into it, but that's the only report really that gives us a lot of uh, numbers as far as heifers go. So, you know, we do need to keep our eyes on that one moving forward. Well, thank you again, Kyle, for being able to join us here on as we start off the week. Again, no markets train today. Kyle, before I let you go, final closing thoughts, important information I overlooked. You know, looking here at this feeder cattle market, uh, we've got August here, you know, sitting the, in the end of last week around that 234, 235 area. That's a good price out there. And you got the cash index sitting around 210. So in my experience, there's going to be some kind of an equilibrium where they come together. And it bothers me a little bit on these feeders carrying that much premium, 24 to $30 premium. As we saw May go off the board, August was right around $30 premium to the cash market. Now they're going to come together at some point in time. So Ask yourself if you can afford to see a ten to maybe a ten, maybe a twenty dollars setback in this feeder board, in order to uh, it, well, is it justifiable? Can you afford that? So you know, just because you're buying puts doesn't mean you're hedged. It just protects the floor in that thing. And if they keep going up, so what? You've got something underneath this thing. If there's another collapse or some sort of economic issue or world issue out there, you've got something there that holds this thing together. And again, it's Livestock Market Analyst Kyle Bumstead. Do you want to talk with Kyle and see how he can implement some of those risk management strategies into your operation? Give him a call, 308-708-7340. Do remember, trading futures and options involve risk of loss. May not be suitable for all investors. Do consider these risks before investing.